Bringing the railroad into the rugged mountains of western North Carolina was not an easy task. Thanks to the help of workers drawn from the North Carolina prison population through a controversial convict labor program, the job was eventually completed at a cost of nearly 300 lives. Today we tell that story. Hello folks, I'm Steve Gilley, and this is Stories, A History of Appalachia. In 1852, the North Carolina and Western Railroad was chartered to bring rail service to Western North Carolina. Samuel McDowell Tate played an important role in managing the company and in sponsoring the construction of the first 55 miles of the railroad in 1855. North Carolina helped to finance the company, which went on to build 76 miles of line between Salisbury and Morganton between 1858 and 1863. Then the railroad venture was stopped. Turns out that voters were angry with the company and with the state because the law allowed those buying private bonds to have the trains come to their towns. That law was repealed during Reconstruction. It was then that the North Carolina legislature declared the charter null and void and chartered a new company, the Western North Carolina Railroad Company, to do the job. The original plan was to connect the Piedmont with Ducktown, Tennessee, just beyond Murphy, North Carolina. Nobody counted on the rugged North Carolina mountains, though. After being stalled by the Civil War, work resumed on the railroad with a new survey completed in 1866. The route chosen included loops and switchbacks to make it up and through the steep mountains. Even so, tunnels would have to be dug, including six between Old Fort and Asheville alone. The longest of these tunnels, and the most difficult to dig, was the Swannanoa Tunnel, which ran under the Eastern Continental Divide. This tunnel, which would be 1,832 feet long and cost $120,000 to build, would make Asheville a rail hub for Western North Carolina. By 1869, the new company had built a little over 35 miles of rail line from Morganton to Old Fort. The construction of the railroad and its accompanying tunnels was done with convict labor, which had become commonplace throughout the South after the Civil War. Many of the convicts were black, mainly because new laws had passed making minor crimes punishable by stiff prison sentences, such as vagrancy laws requiring men to prove they had a job or risk going to prison. Convicts were shipped to Old Fort in October 1876, around 300 of them. They built a stockade to house themselves at Round Knob, near where Andrews Fountain is located today. The working conditions were brutal, with many of them dying or killed. These men worked from sunrise to sunset. In order to move rock in their way, nitroglycerin mixed with sawdust and cornmeal was tamped into drill holes, then set off. These activities killed many of the men who weren't trained to work with explosives. And their bodies are buried in unmarked graves along the track right away. By the spring of 1879, the last major obstacle to completing the track to Asheville was the Swannanoa Tunnel. Digging and blasting kept up every day with cave-ins and deaths not uncommon. Still, work progressed. And that work included more than the blasting and digging. The convicts, with some help from a team of oxen, would haul the first train using ropes along tracks that were pulled up from behind and placed down in front of the engine over and over and over for every mile of new right-of-way cleared. Finally, on May 11, 1879, Governor Zebulon Vance received a telegram from the railroad's chief engineer, James Wilson, saying, quote, Daylight entered Buncombe County today through the Swannanoa Tunnel. End quote. Then, just after the telegram was sent, another cave-in occurred, burying another 20 convict laborers, killing them. The first train to pass through the tunnel did so on October 3, 1880, on its way to Asheville. The rail line by 1882 had made it over 23 miles from Old Fort through Asheville to Azalea, North Carolina. By 1890, those convict laborers had laid an additional 122.6 miles of track between Asheville and Murphy, with the railroad company finally calling it quits. 
over 3,000 convict laborers worked on the railroad project in all, with up to 300 dying during its construction from either accident or disease. 19 of the African-American prisoners were drowned in the Tuckasegee River, weighed down by their shackles as they were going to work on the Cowie Tunnel. Eventually, the expense of running railroad lines through the rugged North Carolina mountains was too much for the Western North Carolina Railroad Company, and it was forced into bankruptcy. Its assets were sold to the Southern Railway Company on August 22, 1894. In 2021, this memorial was placed at the site of Andrews Geyser at Round Knob, commemorating those who sacrificed their lives in the building of the Western North Carolina Railroad. And that, folks, is the story of the building of the railroad in Western North Carolina, another bit of the history of this place we call home. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go down below, click that subscribe button, then ding the bell to get notified whenever we release a new video. Till next we meet, y'all take care. So long, everybody.